Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. In our culture, we have a book, an education system called Subhashitams, which means words of wisdom. These are proverbs, quotes, etc. <coughs> Here's one for you as you look at me freeze outside in Canada. <laughs> Sukarti tyajate vidyam, vidyarti tyajate sukham. This is the first line. Sukarti, one whose artha or meaning comes from comfort. Then automatically, tyajet, they let go of, they renounce. Vidyam, knowledge. <laughs> and vidyarti, for those whose meaning, whose purpose is knowledge, tyajate, automatically, they renounce, they let go of sukham, or comfort. What are you holding on to? And what are you letting go of? When we choose discomfort, like being steady in a voluntary program, like being a morning person and so on, then one is nurturing titiksha. Titiksha means to endure. Once we have sufficient titiksha or the ability to endure, then we can start to inquire or engage in vichara. We are in the final two weeks of our community's offerings for 2022. Our final meaningful mornings for this season will be on Tuesday, December 20th. Meaningful mornings is not just the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, this is a comprehensive program to nurture endurance so that we can be more self-reflective. In chapter 10, Sri Krishna is guiding us to be more authentic and deep than we already are. He's directing our sight to that which is great. You'll see in many of the verses, in many of the quarters, there's the termination or ending, nam, N-A-M. That's indicative of a set. This set is great. This set of bodies of water, this set of games. And being more authentic and deep, he's taking us to the greatest of that great. You'll see words like aham, asmi. And that's where Sri Krishna stops. His teaching methodology is, I, Sri Krishna, have taken you from the great to the greatest. Now keep going. Be more authentic and deep where you don't need sight, but you have the vision of what's beyond the greatest, that is God. In Sri Krishna's analysis of creation, 
it's not just the positive, like the sunrise and flowers and so on. It's also the negative. He has shared that he's deaf, that which devours all. He's gambling, the most deceitful game. And the implication of this is he's trying to intensify our seeing to feeling. I've used this word many times to be more passionate, more intense. Like Acharya Bhishma. When we recommence Meaningful Mornings in January, we will commence or recommence on the day that Acharya Bhishma, the one who's most intense, felt Sri Krishna. In verse 35, the 50th pointer, Sri Krishna shares, he is Brihatsama. This particular song in the Sama Veda, the implication for us, to be disciplined. If you want to do that which is difficult, more discipline is needed. The 51st pointer, he is the Gayatri Mantra. Some of you are new to this. I'm going to try to copy or paste a simple explanation of Gayatri Mantra. I'm reading it out. O thou existence, absolute creator of the three dimensions, we contemplate upon thy divine light. May he, may she stimulate our intellect and bestow upon us true knowledge. The way the sun enables sight, may Gayatri Devi empower us with vision. That change happens in our intellect. The 52nd pointer, the greatest is Marga Shirsha, which is the November December period. Why this is the greatest is because people rest during these months. It's the transition from working hard to working hard. The 53rd pointer, Kusuma Akara. That which brings flowers, spring is the greatest season. And the implication for this, if the previous example was about rest, this example is about work. In spring, everyone is to prep for working hard. In verse 36, the 54th pointer, Sri Krishna is, Dyuta or gambling. Yesterday I shared that there are four facets of dharmic living. Tapa or discipline. Shaucha or purity. Daya or compassion. And satya or truthfulness. Now, what defeats these? What breaks these legs? There's a system to this too. What breaks the leg of tapa is pana, intoxicants. Intoxicants make us indisciplined. Shaucha or purity, it is striya or lust. We have impure thoughts and words and actions when we are lusty. With daya, or compassion, it is suna, that's the breaking force, which means cruelty. You know, in our community, I have perpetually shared that living for divinity is not just living for humans. It also means animals, plants, stones. Our fundraisers have been about that too, correct? One can't just be compassionate to their family, to their community. That's called othering. That's an other community. I don't need to be compassionate to them. That breaks daya. And finally, satya or truthfulness is broken by dhyuta, gambling, cheating. 
<coughs> now one more insight. I'd shared the fifth place where selfishness lives is kanjana or materialism. Where there is a focus on materials, the path of the moon, these five vices are nurtured. Anrita, which means deceit. Mada, or pride. Kama, or lust. Raja, or cruelty. And vaira or enmity. Why I'm sharing all of this is for us to be careful. As you associate, so you think, as you think, so you develop. If you associate with intoxicants, lust, cruelty, gambling, materialism, it is inevitable that these vices will start to break down our personality, our happiness. Sri Krishna goes on to say, amongst those that are brilliant, he is Teja, which means the splendorous. Now these sound like poetic words. How does one define this? When we have studied in English, this prayer is, may we shine. Shining is equivalent to applying. Applying these teachings, applying effort towards values. That's who is splendorous. Amongst those that are sattvic, Sri Krishna shares, the greatest is sattva, that's pointer 57. Sattva means integrity. How does one get to integrity? We explored this last year in the happiness series. Satsanga is the trigger to sattva. Satsanga in English means inclusivity. That triggers integrity. But if you're around people who are exclusive, then we start to feel mutually exclusive in our own personality. I think one thing, I say another thing, I act in a different way. Verse 37. This is a special verse, but I say that about every verse. But this is a special verse. <laughs> Vrishni nam vasudevosmi. Pandava nam dhananjayaha, Muni nam apyaham vyasaha, Kavi nam ushana kavihi. I've referenced the second quarter of this verse many times for all. Vrishni nam, amongst the Vrishnis, you see the NAM, nam. Asmi, the greatest is Vasudeva. Vasudeva is another name for Sri Krishna. Some insights into this. Where did the word Vrishni come from? There is a personality in Sri Krishna's lineage whose name is Yadu. He had a child named Vrishni. Vrishni had a child named lineage, okay? Not just child, I mean grandchild and that uh, that lineage. There's so many personalities. Vasudeva. Sri Krishna's father's name is Vasudeva. And Sri Krishna's then named Vasudeva. Okay? So in this lineage, the greatest is Sri Krishna. The implication for us, and I said this in a jumbled up way, is we are part of this lineage. You know, I, my biological parents are not Sri Krishna in a very objective way.
But if I go into my lineage more authentically and deeply, I'm part of this too, and so are you. To feel that. Then, Pandavanam, amongst the Pandavas, who am I? Dan. <laughs> This is the Dhananjaya that I always reference as Dan. <laughs> Here's some insights into the, this 59th pointer. When Raja Yudhishthira, that's Prince Arjuna's eldest brother, he was trying to unite all of the kingdoms. He was uniting the states. It's possible. <laughs> then... Prince Arjuna led the way, and part of this system is the people who proclaim ownership of this land, they either have to join Raja Yudhishthira or they have to fight Prince Arjuna. Now, most joined your Raja Yudhishthira, but some did try to fight Prince Arjuna, and he won. And what he did was all of the wealth that was being hoarded in that particular locality was freed up to be used by all in the kingdom. What a lovely thought about equality. That nobody is more rich or more poor. Everyone supports everyone. That's why Sri Krishna is highlighting the Nanjaya. This is such an obvious thought for us to re reflect on. Are we like these small minded leaders? who are hoarding, or are we trying to be like Dhananjaya, where we're not possessed by possessions? All belongs to all. Muninam api aham vyasa. Amongst the munis, Sri Krishna is Rishi Vyasa. The word vyasa comes from vyasanat, which means to elaborate, to open. Rishi Vyasa was, is a visionary. Whenever the term Sanatana Dharma comes to your mind, what must come with it is Rishi Vyasa. No personality has done more to sustain and further Sanatana Dharma than Rishi Vyasa. Visionaries are those who live for sustainability. They're not just thinking about themselves or even their generation. They're thinking forever. What's so fascinating about these three quarters Sri Krishna is zooming into, as he's completing these thoughts, zooming into who's involved in this dialogue. Rishi Vyasa is the documenter, correct? Sri Krishna is the speaker, Prince Arjuna is the listener. He's emphasizing the greatness of just this opportunity for us to feel the same way. He shares his Shukra Acharya. That's the 61st pointer. I'll share more tomorrow. From inspiration to application. Your recent application was to reflect on your strong leg and your weak leg. I read many of your insights on our website. For Vivek, my strong leg is Daya. To be empathetic. My weak leg. Um, So many, excuse me, so many. <laughs> My weak leg. I'll share more about tomorrow. I have to think about this a little bit more. Your application for today is to be part of the happiness series. This is the happiness series we will have had. This is our sixth. Tonight, particularly, we have an awesome dynamics on design thinking for your whole life. Our dialogue will be facilitated by Sheila. And later today, 
you'll get to use Slido where you can ask questions and you can vote for which questions are the most important. So be part of all of this. And I know I'm taking more time, but just remember, tomorrow there's an election in Georgia. More important than voting on Slido is voting in Georgia for those who can. Our freedoms depend on this. If you live in Georgia, it is your dharma, your responsibility to vote. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyous.